In this video, we're going to take a look at an introduction to argon diagrams. Now, argon diagrams are the way that we represent complex numbers. And like you can see, this looks pretty similar to a regular Cartesian coordinate system that we're used to. So we have a horizontal axis here. Now, in this case, this doesn't represent the x-axis. This actually represents here the real axis. So we use RE to represent the real axis. And then we have a vertical axis again, similar to the y-axis, but this time this represents the imaginary axis. So if I pick a very basic example here, say Z, and I say this is 1 plus 2i, for example. Then we think about this in two parts here. We have the real part, and we have the imaginary part to our complex number. So when I plot this complex number here, well, if we think about the real part, that's 1. So that means we go one unit along here in the real sense. And then for the imaginary part here, that's two units, it's 2i, and that's in the positive sense. So we go one unit along, and then up two, we plot our point there. Okay, so that would be z. Now there we said that we plot the point here. We can actually represent this as a vector as well. So we go from the origin here. If I try and join this up here, and this should be a straight line. Probably won't be, come doing it freehand, but that would be my vector there. Okay, so like I said, we can also represent that as a vector but that does usually depend on the context of the question and like we can see we do have four um, quadrants here quadrant one two three and four again just like we used to with our cartesian coordinate system okay so let's have a look now at plotting a few points here on an argon diagram so we want to draw the following on the same argon diagram here so we've got five parts of this a through to e so if we start with part a here we just want to plot the number five so this only has a real part to it. There is no um, imaginary part to this. So in that case, anyway, I plot this, we go five units along here. So one, two, three, four, five. And that would be our point there, okay? So what I'll do is I'll label this as Z1, this is Z2, Z3, Z4, and then Z5. Okay, so what I've plotted there now is Z1. We'll note that here, that's Z1. Z2 then, so we'll just take that off. Z2 is minus four I. So in this case, there's no real part now. This just has the imaginary part, and that's minus 4i. So we go down four units in the imaginary sense. So one, two, three, four. And we'll plot our point there. Okay, and that's Z2. So that's Z2. Give that a tick. We've now got one plus 3i. So we go one unit along in the real sense. So we go along one unit here on the real axis, and then we go up three units for the imaginary. So we go one, two, three we get our point there so that's z3 so we give that a tick so for part d then we've got one minus three i now hopefully you notice here that c and d are what we call a complex conjugate pair so one plus three i and one minus three i that's a complex conjugate so when i plot this now we have a special property here so one minus three i so we go one unit along again but this time we now go down three units so one two three we plot our point there Okay, so that's Z4. And hopefully you notice here, when we plot a complex conduit like this, it's simply a reflection in the real axis here. Okay, so that's Z4. Z4, and then finally for Z5 here, we've got minus 7, minus i. So we go 7 units to the left. So that's 5, 6, 7. And then minus i means we go down 1 unit. And that would be there. And that would be the point Z5 there. Okay. For this example, I have represented them all as points rather than vectors, otherwise it would get maybe a little bit messy, um, but we could have also represented them as vectors as well. Okay, and there we have it, so that's our solution to that question, and that brings the end of this video on an introduction to the argon diagram. In the next video, we're going to take a look at the modulus and argument form of a complex number.